See that big log right there, man? Yeah. Just drag that over here. That big log is actually going to be working as a lever. So Craig says he'll make a simple trap. Now here we got a little lever stick that is going to hook onto our number seven notch. There's no way us three knuckleheads are going to be able to do this. For thousands of years, man lived wild, and our triumph over Mother Nature defined who we were. We were rugged, we were strong, and as we evolved, our ingenuity led to towering achievements. We secured our place at the top of the food chain, and now we have the waistline to prove it. I'm Creek Stewart. I'm a survivalist, and this is your midlife wake-up call. So get off the couch and come out to the woods. If you can survive a week with me, you can take on anything. Survival is simple. Just don't die. Yet another bitter cold morning. This week, I'm taking out three friends. It's getting like negative 10 at night. Yeah, man, I saw I saw that it was going to be record, like record cold. Like, it's never been this cold here. This is not good. <laughs> One of us surely will break our legs. Although they came here together for an adventure, each of them are here for their very own reasons. Hey, look oh, who it is. There you go, it's Creek. Look at his gloves Watch are almost know. as yellow as his vibrant hair. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. How's it going? Morning, brother. Matt's a 28-year-old. He's been so focused on his career that he's let his health go. Probably should get a bike. Probably should walk more. Hey, Jesse. Jesse's a 27-year-old rider, and he's ready to get serious about his health. Welcome to the biggest offender of my unhealthy lifestyle, and that's my computer. Hey, it's Ben. Ben, pleasure. Ben's a 34-year-old substitute teacher, and he understands that the hard work necessary to survive in the woods could play a huge role in taking his health plan to the next level. As you can see, there's not a ton of food in my fridge. Well, welcome to the Great Smoky Mountains. <laughs> Beautiful. I'll tell you what, as you guys hopped out of the car there, all friends from a big city, I couldn't help but think of all the headlines I've been reading and listening to in the news this week in this area. Three friends start hiking the Appalachian Trail one morning. Five hours later, they use their cell phones and dial a rescue distress call. By the time the rangers got to them, they were suffering from severe hypothermia and frostbite. We were having fun, then Creek got serious real quick. It scared all of us. The crazy thing about Mother Nature is she doesn't give a crap whether you live or you die. You know, but this week I do. That's scary. My usual way to keep away from that danger is just to not go out at all. This is an incredibly dangerous and deadly time of year. And our number one priority is protection from the elements. By the end of the day today, we have to have shelter and we have to have fire. So before we head, I've got each of you a backpack. Here's one for you. Now in each of these backpacks, guys, it's really basic. Don't expect much. You've got one liter of fresh drinking water. Any other water, we've got a source from nature. You also have your survival knife. And that's it, guys. And that's all we need? That's all you get. There's a slight difference. Yeah. Looks like you got more in your backpack. Yeah. We got a couple bells and whistles in there. <laughs> we got a long hike in. I don't know exactly where our base camp is going to be, so we've got to hike until we find a good one. Awesome. All right. These guys are from Los Angeles, where it's warm and sunny almost every day. But things are different here in the Great Smoky Mountains. Hypothermia is a very real threat. Yeah, I got you. Ooh. And so it begins. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna hike deep into this woods, establish a base camp. On the fifth day, they're going solo. So you guys get outside much? I mean, you're from Alaska, right, Matt? I grew up in Alaska, and I used to do a lot of outside stuff, but since I moved away, I, I probably haven't been out seven, eight years, yeah. really. I'm a very busy guy. I don't spend a lot of time worried about my health and my personal well-being and all that stuff. So I'm very excited to kind of just get out here doing some challenges that are difficult for me and then kind of teach myself to be worried about me a little bit more. Looks pretty sparse around here. How are we going to be able to find food with the, <laughs> the winter like this? Oh, that's actually funny, man. He's already talking about food. Hypothermia is a very real threat. 
our survival priorities are very clear cut. So in extreme circumstances, we can live for three hours without shelter, three days without water, and three weeks without food. So where do you think food is on our list of priorities? Pretty low, this week. pretty low. Yes. So we'll just we'll just keep heading up. It may be a while. I'm sure there's a nice B and B around here somewhere. <laughs> yeah. You got a bed? Yeah, I got it. <sighs> This looks good. It's for like a shelter? A little, yeah, man. It's like a little pocket, you know? It's protected on almost all sides. It's close to our water. Look at all this wood. Look at all these building materials. Look up the hill. Seen a lot of stuff I'm not seeing. It feels cold. <laughs> <laughs> it feels remote. Based upon all the down wood I'm seeing, I'm thinking like a traditional wiki up. It's kind of like a stick teepee. You know, it's got a little door in front. There's actually a little fire pit in the middle of this thing. And then we sleep around that fire inside. The first thing we need to do is we need to each build an individual bed. The last thing you want to do is lay down on this cold, wet ground. Conduction will kill you in a matter of hours. It's when the earth sucks that heat right out of your body. He starts talking about induction killing us in hours. OK, let's, let's, then let's not do that. Let's make beds. I want to give you guys something. And what these are, are just simple bow saw blades. But by just having the blades, means we've got to improvise and make a handle. To make the handle, we each need a thumb-sized branch about six inches longer than the blade. We're going to bend that around a tree to make it nice and flexible. Then split the branch on each end so that we can slide the blade into place. Okay, now flip that ring over. There we go. We've got a really useful bow saw that can make quick work of big logs for our shelter and our fire and our beds. I'm the guy who brought everyone here. I needed a kick in my to start making positive life decisions, and I forced them to come out to the woods with me. Jesse wanted to go out and do this big adventure thing. He talked us into it. Now we're out here, and it's a little remote and a little cold, and I'm a little bit mad at Jesse for talking me into this trip. Good. I'll tell you what, guys, we're pretty much done with our beds for now, and this gives us a perfect outline, okay? We need to haul a lot of rafters to really get the structure of this wiki up. So, I'm nervous. I'm not really outdoorsy. It's a challenge. I don't really camp. I never hunted. But, you know, it's a once in a lifetime experience. And I think it's really going to be cool. You got it, Jesse? I could use help. You guys got that? Yeah. I think we're to the point where we can start grabbing handfuls of leaves to block the wind and repel any rain or snow. Look inside, man. I mean, that looks like a hut. Oh, my God. Oh, man. There is something kind of spirit of the wild about how that all worked out. You look at it, and you're just like, I can't believe we three knuckleheads in Creek did that. And now we have a place to sleep, which is good because it's starting to get very cold. I mean, dude, it's huge inside. <laughs> it's amazing. This shelter took a long time. We have a very limited window to get fire going, so everything has to work like clockwork. So no one has asked me how we're going to start a fire. <laughs> I assume Creek is going to use his eyes, and he's going to stare intensely into a bundle of sticks. This is kind of an old-school mountain man fire kit. Inside, we've got a piece of metal, a piece of iron. This is just a flint rock. Now, this black stuff you see, this is just a cotton fiber cloth. This is what's called char cloth. See that? Yeah. That right there is how a mountain man would have started his fire. Then he would have put that into a tinder bundle and blown it into flame. And now, I'm going to show you guys exactly how confident I am in your fire starting abilities. <laughs> okay? Because you see this steel? Yeah. You see this flint? Bummer. Oh, no. What? We're deep in the Smoky Mountains and a storm is coming. Dangerously low temperatures are forecast in this area starting tonight. 
Even with our sturdy beds to get us up off the ground and the wiki up to block the wind, our chances are slim to none if we don't get a fire. Bummer. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't know the first thing about survival, but I know one thing is you don't throw away your fire source. And I'm like, what the f*** is he doing? Freak, you totally boned us. We have entered the bone zone. Guys, there's one thing I can promise you about a survival scenario is you're never going to have exactly what you need. We have char cloth, the charred cotton cloth that takes the spark. You have knives that are carbon steel. There is flint in this area. It's over there, right? Yeah, <laughs> somewhere. Yeah. The best place to find flint is in creek beds. And I'd say we got about 10 minutes. Let's head over the hill, scour that creek bottom, and try to find some flint. Is this some creek? I think that's shale, man. It's got to be really smooth right from the top. It does, like glass. You yeah. Know? And you're looking for like little chip marks in rocks. A chip mark? Anything down there? I just don't know. Uh, I mean, is this about what we're looking for? Feels very, it's a harder Dude, rock than most that's of stuff. That's definitely flint. Guys, let's use this one. Daylight's burning. Yeah. Let's, let's go. And listen, guys, even though time is ticking and running against us, there is nothing about this process that we want to rush. Drive that spark down into that char cloth. Keep on striking. See, that one almost struck. Good job, buddy. Come on, Matt. Doing good. Oh, man. You got one. Okay, you got one. Now, don't rush. It's not going anywhere. Got it right here. Nice. Oh, nice. Where there's smoke, there is not always fire. Blow harder, Jesse. There we go. Yeah. Okay. It's too early to celebrate. Blow in there, Ben. Harder. Like birthday candle style. Matt, get down in there, man. We need those lungs. Go ahead and get some of this on top of it. It needs oxygen or it's going to go out. There we go. Let's go on to this next level. Oops, sorry. Oh, man. We did it. Oh. Good job, guys. Woo. Woo. That's fire right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Take that, Mother Nature. <laughs> we'll get a nice, good fire going out here. We'll gather up more firewood. Then we'll transfer our fire inside. And finally, for the first time today, be able to relax. We made fire, man. Just that feeling of just like so much relief. Like, we are now good for the night. Like, we're going to be okay. And it was very tense, but an awesome time doing it. It was amazing. Oh, man, it's cold. I woke up this morning and it was super cold. And to be honest, I was pretty bummed. Man, the temperature dropped. Yeah. Yeah. Big time. It's bone chilling. It hits you in the face, and all of a sudden you're numb. It's still really early, you know, so I think our best bet is to hang around camp for a few minutes, maybe make some adjustments to the shelter, grab our water, get a little bit more firewood, and go out and see if we can possibly find animal signs. I, for one, am going to make a door because that big gaping hole did us no favors. This is no easy week by any stretch of the imagination. The cold makes everything more difficult. By the way, we got something that we can put in front of the door. Well, that's nice. You know, I'll stop the wind, you know, primarily. Yeah. Well, guys, load up. Let's head out. And we'll let these boil while we go out and look around. Is this going to be enough backpack for all the food we're going to be getting? <laughs> yeah. Just yours alone will be more than we need. You know, guys, I'm the only one that's going to be eating. Finding food this time of year is incredibly difficult. The one good thing about the snow this morning is that we can easily track animals. We're really looking for any kind of signs of animal activity. You know, something that maybe something's been running around or a, an animal den or a track. We're definitely after small game. So it's been 24 hours since I've had something to eat, and I don't feel hungry. I just need something to keep me going. We're cold, so everything just kind of like feels slower, and I haven't eaten in a day, and I just feel slow. I'm beginning to lose my energy. Right here, actually. What do you see? There is definitely a hole in this tree that goes down into what looks like some kind of an underground burrow. See these little acorn holes? Oh, yeah. 
Those right there are signs of probably some type of a squirrel. I guess, you know, I'm hungry. I'll eat a squirrel. The best strategy in this particular instance is to set a snare with the noose being literally right here. The snare we design has to suspend the animal. So we've got to build a little trigger system, and then we've got to build kind of an engine to get it up off the ground. Would you use your knife and sharpen the point of that? Yeah. And I'm going to have you do the same thing to that tip right there. Will you sharpen this up just a little bit, man? There's a lot of pieces so far going into this snare. You'd be surprised. It's very, very simple. That big log is actually going to be working as a lever. We're going to have it resting on this Y right here at an angle. It's going to be attached to a trigger. So Creek says he'll make a simple noose trap. He starts just working on stuff, and it's real complicated. Hunger is setting in, so we're on the hunt for food. And as we pass by this tree, I notice signs of animal activity, and setting a snare might be the best bet for catching our next meal. When triggered, the heavy end of that log is going to lever on this Y. The heavy end's going to fall down, the light end's going to pull up, and that's what's going to suspend our animal in the air. So now it's time to put pieces of this puzzle together. I'm getting to the point where I need something soon. I'm ready to eat a squirrel if it shows up. I'm beginning to feel that lack of energy from yeah. days worth of work and not eating, man. Even though we're putting a little bit of work into this snare, it's the most efficient way of hunting. So here we go. We got one stake here. It's another little lever point. I can already tell that this is one of these tasks that's going to really frustrate me. Yeah. Got big, clumsy hands. Yeah, all these little minor things. Our noose is here. It's attached to right here. When the animal comes out, that noose tightens. It pulls this right here, which is attached to our lever, and that takes the whole thing up. Setting snares is definitely a detail game, you know. Yeah. I mean, bring it down and just a little more forward. There we go. And we're going to kind of play with this lever here, so I'll need you guys to help hold it. Let it go back just really gently. We are definitely on a hair trigger. <laughs> yeah. Let's let this one be, move on, and look for more animal signs. It all makes uh, so much sense and is relatively simple, but not something I could have come up with on my own. You guys be sure to remember this location. Yeah. yeah. When it comes to snaring, it is absolutely a numbers game. No chance of fish. In a stream this small, I, I don't see it happening, man. We have to keep pushing forward, regardless of how cold it is. Guys, think. There are tracks for a Pizza Hut. Two days in, and I feel like I'm already taking habits home. Just the idea of being conscious of everything you're doing is something that everyone should do, but I do not do. Heart disease is in my family, and I'm not doing enough to be positive and avoid, you know, fatal heart attack. Now, this spot actually looks a little disturbed. See that? We got snow. And then we've got what looks like a little path that doesn't have snow, like something's knocked the snow off. A little type of fur right there, is that what that is? Go in, is that right there? It looks like it. I mean, it definitely looks like something. Dude, there's poop. There's, there's a little, you see that? Oh yeah. That is definitely rabbit. I would guess that this rabbit is coming out of that deep thicket, down through here, probably, down to this stream once or twice a day to get a little drink of water. Unlike the squirrel, there was a path. The, the, the thing was there today. And so that's super exciting. We kind of use that spot right there as a like choke point, clear these branches out of the way, and do our lever snare kind of right into that little choke point. Sent a snare for a squirrel, and I was like, oh, that'd be great. But a rabbit, that sounds a lot better. Oh, yeah, man. As much as I really want to take the lead on this snare, it's important that these guys understand how to do this stuff for themselves. This guy could do the leverage? That'd be a perfect lever, man. Between the three of us, we started making the trap, and it's a pretty awesome trap. All right. That's perfect, man. It's a good use of resources. Save us a lot of time and energy. Setting up the snare was chaotic to say the least. Like we didn't have Creek's skills and that's for sure. But what we did have is a big desire to eat a big fat rabbit. 
the chances of us catching the rabbit might not be the best. I'm hoping that we, we get it. It's free? Yeah. You got it, guys. Ooh, great job, guys. That looks great. Great. That's I'm excited. Awesome. I wasn't too thrilled with the idea of snaring a squirrel. If we do, hopefully an appetizer. We've got two snares up. The best thing at this point is to get back to base camp. The fact of the matter is, is that even though we have clear signs of animal activity, snaring is always unpredictable. I'm feeling optimistic, but if some of these things don't turn like we don't get food, that optimism is going to turn really quick and it's going to become a little worrisome. The problem with today is we did a lot of work and there isn't a lot of evidence of it yet. A lot of it is future stuff where hopefully these snares will catch, so we're kind of empty-handed. Temperature is absolutely bitter cold. And after three days in the wild, it just keeps getting worse. And we still haven't eaten a thing. These three friends came out here to make changes in their lives. And I know that if they can make it through a week in these conditions, they can make it through anything. Oh my gosh. Coldest night of my life. I'm not even kidding. I mean, I thought it was bad. I mean, the first night was a little bit adjusting to, but last night was unbelievable. Brutal, brutal. Oh I'm cold, and I haven't an ate in, in two going on three days. I have less energy than I did the first two days by a long shot, and, yeah, I'm ready to get something to eat. It was rough, man. It's cold, and, and it gets colder and colder, and I've never been even close to this cold. Once we get moving on the trail, checking snares. Yeah. yeah. I say we do it, man. I need to move. Still looking for signs for yeah, here? Absolutely. We're always looking for signs of anything. Animal activity, anything that you think looks interesting. It's called situational awareness, man. The straight ahead's our snare. Oh, I see it. It doesn't look like anything's in it. Dad gone it. I saw that that snare had not gone off. It, it, it was discouraging. But this is the reality of snaring, guys. I mean, seriously, you know, nine times out of ten, this is what you're going to find. I feel really upset. I feel like 20 times hungrier after seeing that. I guess we just got to check the next stair. To be so hungry and to walk up on your first snare completely untriggered, and untouched is really demoralizing. We've only got one snare left, and quite frankly, I'm losing a little bit of optimism. Man, you guys are moving. Eager to get to that snare. Uh. All right, it's right over there, huh? Oh man, it's tripped. It's tripped. Well, just because it's tripped, guys. Yeah. No, I see it. What do you see? I see a rabbit Shut up. From a... Get the... No, you don't. Shut yes, up. I do. No, you don't. Oh, my yes, God. I do. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, my God. I literally couldn't believe it. I know that he says that we set this thing, it'll work, but it worked. It worked. Guys, that's awesome. We did it, buddy. That's awesome. The three of us made that snare. It wasn't Creek Snare. It was our snare, and we oh, caught a rabbit. I was so excited. I was jazzed. I got to tell you. That's a nice sized little rabbit too. Yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. It's like, crazy, man. Well, there's a responsibility that goes along with taking the animal's life. And I mean, I've never done it, so I've never had that responsibility. That's no simple thing, dude. No. We're gonna get some sustenance from that rabbit, and that's good. You'll never forget a moment like this. No. Literally. I've never been hunting before, and I'm, I mean, this, we need this food, and, and this, this guy's gonna help all of us out. Yeah, I've never experienced these type of stakes before where I needed to take something's life in order to continue mine. 
It's intense. It's like a roller coaster of emotions, and that's very typical for guys who aren't used to hunting and who aren't used to finding and killing wild game. And for all I know, this might be the only thing we eat this week. I feel lucky and I feel grateful. They're really happy about the fact that they have food, but they wouldn't be human if it's not mixed with a little bit of sadness. And that's exactly how they should feel in this moment. Let's go make some rabbit. Yeah. It's just a good, it's a good day. One of the best survival tools that you can keep on your person is an emergency blanket. This blanket right here can reflect up to 80% of your body heat. In a cold weather scenario, this survival blanket can actually be a shelter in and of itself. In this case, we're gonna string this emergency blanket in between two trees. This reflective blanket with a pine bough bed beneath you can reflect body heat and the heat from the fire could absolutely save your life and it all fit right in your pocket. Fire's still good. Good. All right, well, what do we do with this guy? For now, man, just lay the rabbit, not next to the fire because we don't want it cooking. Yeah. So just a way so it continues to thaw out, you know, because if it freezes, then it's going to be really difficult to field dress. And I'll be back in a second. I'm going to go cut down a couple of saplings so that we can roast this thing over the fire. I'm so stoked for these guys right now, you know? They are so excited about having just gotten this rabbit, and so am I. I don't think we want the fire too hot. It's like a barbecue, you want coals, right? This is just a really, really cool moment for these three guys. You gotta cook it real slow, it's nice and tender, right? Snaring the rabbit is just the first step in this process. These guys have to field dress this rabbit in order to cook it. We're just gonna make a little slice through the skin right on the back. Uh -huh. This is all you're gonna use your knife for. So I decide to split up the task and let each of them participate. And it's important for these guys to understand that eating meat means an animal has to die. And they are seeing that process from the beginning to the end. I think that we all went about it in a respectful way, which is important to me. How are we going to cook the rabbit creek? We're going to roast the meatiest parts over the fire. Come on. Come on. While that's cooking, we're going to boil all the edible organs and the skull into a kind of stew that we can sip on over the next few days. My mouth's watering it right now yeah, looking at all this. Even though this rabbit is a small meal, this is going to be a huge calorie boost. You guys remember the last time we all went out to eat, us three? Yeah. And we had like a whole table full of food, and we just <laughs> shoved it in our mouths not even thinking about it. This rabbit is not a table full of food, but I think we're we, looking forward to this, and we're going to savor this more than the last time we ate, you know? This is so much more. I do think our uh, stew is ready to pull off, and we can start sipping on that while this rabbit finishes up. Here you go. Oh, it's so good. It tastes like nutrition, man. It's really <laughs> oh, it's uh, good. Especially that it's warm. I'm feeling it come up through me right now. <laughs> oh, that's real good. Uh, it's weird to see a skull yeah. while you're drinking. <laughs> yeah, that's strange. <laughs> yeah. Just close your eyes, man. It still had its eyes, so I could still see it was a rabbit. And I just took a sip from it and saw it staring back at me. But it was the best. It tasted great. Speaking of the head, the head's good to pick meat off of. Yeah. You can use our stir stick here and pull it out of there. And there's the liver in there. The kidneys are in there. Just don't drop that. I think this is what, the liver? Yeah. You guys mind if I have a little bite of that? Yeah, go for yeah, it, go man. Go for it, man. Mm. Good? It's like liver. You want it, Ben? For my first oh, liver. Yeah. Not bad. Is that throat good eating? Go for it, yep. Yeah? That's part of the neck, actually. Mm hmm. Anything on there, man, will be delicious. Man, we're destroying this head. Suck that eyeball out of there, too, man. I'll try it. That one's actually a little gross. Here goes nothing. Go for it, man. Trust me, it'll be delicious. Mm. Yeah, that's good. I mean, <laughs> looking at it's not great. <laughs> I'm just saying you can get out of your field of vision. Yeah. And you know what's filling your belly? Oh, man, I'm feeling so much better already. If you guys want to go ahead and pull that rabbit off of there. <sighs> Let's cut this up. We don't want it to get cold. Oh, thank you. The leg. The leg. Take a leg. Thank you, go, brother. You got an awesome piece right there, brother. Wow. That's so good. I mean, it's juicy. I, I can taste that fat coming in. Oh, man, I've been needing this. 
Wow. Dynamite, man. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Oh, that was great. After this meal, I feel like I'm, I'm a human again. I feel, I feel like I've got energy. Game changer. You know, guys, this may be the only food you have this week. So be sure to enjoy it while you've got it because tomorrow morning starts your solo day and you're going to have to find your own base camp, make your own shelter, and build your own fire. And you may not get another chance at food. Today is going to be incredibly difficult. Snaring that rabbit yesterday was crucial because they're going to need that calorie boost. I think these guys are about as ready as they're ever going to be for their solo day, but you just never know what's going to happen. It's just going to be me. And the big thing is I don't spend time on myself. And so literally everything I'm going to be doing is to make sure I don't die during the night. I have to worry about myself. All right, guys. You've got your wilderness bed rolls all wrapped up. That's going to save you a ton of time when it comes to putting that bed in your shelter. I know that it's going to be tough. I know it's going to be a lot of work. When you go to start that fire, make sure you take your time. You know, just take a couple of deep breaths. You know, don't rush it. The weather is so bad and the, the wood is so wet. Making a fire by yourself is going to be real difficult. Now you've got all day to get this stuff done. It's completely achievable. You guys got this. All right. Hey, fellas. Good luck. Good luck, guys. Stay positive. With just the few days we've been here, we've been given a number of opportunities and actually learned a lot of skills. It'll be interesting to try it on our own because I think it's going to be good for me, and I hope it's good for those fellas, too. Oh, boy. I think this is my new home. Yeah, this is the place. I'm an only child, so I'm used to being alone. But me alone is sometimes a dangerous thing. It looks like this was a woodpecker's favorite tree. Sorry, woodpecker. I need some place to sleep tonight. There you go. It's already becoming home. Can't wait. I'm sweating. And it's just a real, real good feeling right now. And it's the type of feeling I gotta start chasing a little more at home, just the feeling of doing good for myself. Another down tree. Where'd my saw go? You gotta think about building this thing, just like me, Matt, and Jesse out here. You gotta think of these sticks as buddies that are helping each other out. I built a shelter, I built some fire. I haven't spent time alone on this mountain. It's a lot of fun to have your friends around, but being on your own, that's probably the scariest thing for me. Hey, brother. Hey, Creek. <laughs> Are you warming up? Yeah, I mean, it's been a lot of work. Dude, it's coming together. Yeah, I, I went in the rhododendron. Thought I'd have a little jungle party. I like it, man. It's different. You're like the Michelangelo of shelters, man. You know, you saw a shelter where no one else did. This shelter is like Ben himself. Very unique and very quirky. I even have this to cover up in case uh, <laughs> yeah. I decide to sleep in the buck. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Good luck tonight, buddy. Great yes. job. See you tomorrow. Great job, seriously. See you tomorrow morning. It's about time to make some fire. That's a lean-to. I think I did really well with the shelter, but I'm really worried about fire. And that's, like, the most important part. No, well, this rock probably isn't working because it's breaking and not the knife. Like, I'd rather have a fire and just stand by it all night long and not have a shelter. You are a dragon. There's some flame. <laughs> yeah! Look at this caveman. Oh, man, I'm relieved. That was so hard. Uh-oh, I smell smoke. Yeah? 
Welcome to my home, Creek. Oh, my gosh. My friend, you have made Alaska proud. I'm glad. I mean, the mountain man came out today, huh? Yeah. This absolutely looks awesome, and you have a fire going. I mean, I, yeah, it's it's wet, wet. I'm wet as I've been this whole trip, and I've been, I mean, I needed it soon, so yeah. I, I had to get going on it. That's a huge issue, man. Yeah. You know, there's an old saying in the woods, cotton kills. Matt's wearing a cotton shirt and jeans, which is soaked to the bone. His first priority around this fire is to dry out those clothes. Maybe I'll hang my coat and my shirt up while I'm... Well, the sun's out, at least. But you've got a nice, solid fire going, man. I, I don't think there's any work for me to do here. Thank you, Creek. It was a blast. All right, dude. There's something really nice about being alone and being able to pull this off. Still, sometimes I just kind of get down on myself. I mean, just because I'm a big guy and it kind of bothers me. You know, what we did up there was neat, but doing this alone is pretty extraordinary. You look at this shelter and you realize, like, oh, man, if I'm really putting my head down and doing it, it can get done. I just got to take that home with me and be ready to do the work and make it better for myself. A lot of people look at big people and they think that they're lazy, and I think anybody looking at this, they know I'm not lazy. I got to stop putting that on myself and just believe that I'm capable of a lot. Sometimes I really don't expect a lot of myself, and, you know, I, I ought to. Man make fire. <laughs> yeah. <gasps> the man might lose fire pretty soon. Dude, you got a fire. What are you talking about? You worried about losing it? Yeah, I don't know how to keep a fire going once I've got it. Well, I'll tell you what, let's punch it up. We got to get a hot coal bed. Okay. Jesse's got an awesome lean-to, looks really sturdy, looks also like he used a saw a lot, and he's got a fire. The fact that I did it by myself without any help, just using exactly what he taught us over the last week, now I feel comfortable that if I went out in the woods, I could maybe start a fire and find shelter and make it for myself. I mean, that's not something everyone can say. Thank you so much for everything, man. No problem, brother. Use the last remaining bit of daylight that you've got to gather firewood. That's what I'll do. Because Lord knows you're going to need it tonight. All right, brother. Great job. Thank you. It's been a bear of a day. There's something very nice about being in the uh, woods here, and it's very, very dark. Thinking about life, and it's freaking beautiful out here. Just being alone right now, out here. I'm more capable of what I thought that, uh, you know, I just need to keep that in mind, that if I put my mind to it, I can do a lot. I'm never going to forget how things have been out here. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. It's definitely a life changer, for sure. And not that many people get a chance at having a huge change in their life. And that includes improving my health, which is a daunting task, but so was that shelter. That was a huge task. When I convinced Matt and Ben to come out here, I was like, we're going to have an adventure, and it's going to be once in a lifetime. That's what I was looking for. I wanted an adventure, and I got one. The being out of shape thing was kind of uh, a symptom of a bigger problem, which was I just wasn't paying attention. And I think going forward, I'm going to be paying more attention to myself instead of other things going on. My jungle hut might be a weird shelter, it sure worked out well for me. And it meant so much that I did that by myself. And I don't know if doing this makes you a better person. I know for me, I feel like I took something away that I'm going to keep and, and I'm better for it. Most of the time before I go to bed, I'm thinking of like, oh, who do I need to email tomorrow? What do I need to do tomorrow? What's going on? All that noise. And then out here, it was just keep the fire going. Am I going to be comfortable tonight? Are my legs warm? Am I dry yet? Just these really simple but extremely important things. And that level of clarity was a really unique thing to have. Morning, Jesse. Morning, Creek. You made it. Yep, all through the night, rain and everything. Hey, guys. Hey, Mountain Man. Look at you all suited up. Can I come say? On, come on, come on. Oh, you got it, bud. How was last night? It was awesome. You actually look rejuvenated. Really? <laughs> a little bit, yeah. I thought I'd sneak up on you. What's up, guys? Hey, How's it going? Sorry. Good to see you, buddy. How was the last night? Good. My wood cubby hole worked perfectly. I was sleeping, 
and I just felt the fire going down. I just wake up and I just kind of chuck it in. It worked perfectly. Nice. What? You have a cubby hole for wood? Oh, yes, he does. I made a big old <laughs> shelter, dude. I can't. He's I, got basically a it. woodshed. In his shelter. A woodshed, a reading room, an attic. My shelter is a woodshed. <laughs> <laughs> when I heard that there were three buddies from Los Angeles coming to spend the week in the woods with me, I was a little bit worried. But I couldn't have been more wrong. You guys rank among an elite group of outdoorsmen who have weathered some brutal conditions this week. You should be really, really proud of yourselves. You know, Jesse... You were entertaining to watch this week. You know, you weren't the first to tackle every single skill that we went with this week. But one thing I really liked about you is that you work really good as a team player. But you also take a lot of pride in being able to do these skills by yourself. Yeah! You know, and that was refreshing. You did an amazing job. Ben? Yeah. You this week remind me of why I fell in love with the woods in the first place. You reminded me this week not to get caught up in the textbook way of doing things. And watching you kind of put your own flair on this whole experience and your shelter design was a really cool breath of fresh air, man. You are a dragon. Substitute teacher is off textbook. Yeah. And Matt, you have definitely made Alaska and all the mountain man that came from that place proud this week. You know, you really approached this experience from a I'm taking no prisoners attitude. You were the one to find Flint. It's a harder rock that's, than most of stuff. definitely Flint. You were the one to strike that Flint rock and get that ember into that shark cloth. And I know that when you get back at home, the experience here is going to start to fade a little bit. And I don't want you to forget all the successes and the amazing times you've had with your buddies this week. And because of that, I actually want to give you something. I want to give you the same exact knife rig. Oh, wow. Nice. That's awesome. Thank you, Creek. I appreciate it. You're that. welcome, buddy. Thank you. I know that I give you the knife, Matt, but I have a feeling that that's going to be a community blade shared amongst three buddies over the course of a lifetime of adventures. Let's get out of this place. All right. I may have taught these guys survival skills, but I'm walking away this week having learned some life skills myself. I do hope that I can go back and take this experience and make some changes that are good for me. And I think that when we go out and I can use this tool, then we'll all be reminded of this time when we all got together and did something extraordinary.